Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for those new here, hi, my name is Jenny and I'm an osteopathic medical student. So a lot of you have been asking what is the difference between MDs and DOs? And it's interview season coming up and this is actually one of the questions that most DO um, medical schools will ask you and I just wanted to share with you some things that I know I've been dreading actually I've had so many questions on this but I've been dreading to make this video just because it's hard for me to sit here and get scrutinized by people who come and don't know what a DO is I don't know I guess I'm more ready to put myself out there, so hopefully this won't be such a long video. I want to start out with the similarities and we'll end with the differences. And I have notes here to um, just so I won't forget anything. So the similarities between an MD and a DO. Let's start with the medical training. Both MDs and DOs attend medical school. So once you graduate four years of medical school, you become a doctor or a physician. Just one has an MD behind their name and the other has a DO. Um, our training is both two years of didactics, which is lecture. In your first two years, you get your anatomy, your basic sciences, and everything else. Um, and then in the next third and fourth year is when you get your clinical experience. So that is when you go out into a clinic and work with a doctor and learn the medical side, actually the hands-on patient contact side of things. And I believe that this is, the t this is actually what determines the type of physician that you become. Not if you're in, in an MD school or a DO school, but actually where you do your rotations, what type of preceptors you have. Um, what kind of training you have as um, to become a doctor. So just to give an example, the our professor who taught us pharmacology in medical school was actually an MD who wrote questions for the USMLE who basically was in every clinical trial he named beta blockers. So this is a genius man, you know, and so the type of education we get is not specific for DO. It's the same type of medicine. We learn Western medicine. Oh, and another term that we use for MDs versus DOs is DOs are osteopath and MDs are allopath. We still learn guidelines and we still abide by guidelines um, once out in practice. And then going back to the training and how that affects you in becoming a physician, for our school, um, in my fourth year, I did go on auditions and sub-internships and that that is where basically you um, you audition as at a residency to see if they like you and hopefully you match with them. That's like a whole nother topic on its own. But in my third year, our programs or our hospitals around um, the place that my medical school was at was unopposed. And what that means was that there's no other residents who would be ahead of you when it came to doing procedures or things like that. So basically what unopposed mean is that you are it. It's just you and the physician. And so during my internal medicine rotation, I had all my own patients. I wrote their notes, I wrote their discharge, I wrote their admits. Um, during OB, I delivered all the babies. During um, surgery, I was first assist. Oh, during L um, ER, I got to do a lumbar puncture. I got to do all the procedures in my ER rotation just because there's no other residents that would need to, say, deliver a baby or need those numbers before me. Um, in certain places where it is an opposed program where they have other residents, the pecking order is attending, residents, medical student. So a lot of people in med school don't get the hands-on training that I was fortunately been able to get because I've been trained at an unopposed program. And what this means for me is that it's a lot more work, but I do get to learn a lot more. And so it doesn't depend on the MD or DO program. It depends on where specifically you were trained. So say you go to an MD program that is unopposed as well, you would get a similar training to the one I just explained, if that makes sense. <laughs> and so now that you kind of understand how 
MDs and DOs are basically the same. They're both physicians and they both go to medical school. They have the same amount of training. It just breaks my heart when I hear people say that because you're a DO, you're not as smart as someone who is an MD or you're not as adequate as someone who is an MD. Like growing up, you know, I identify as a female, I identify as being Asian, and now I identify as being a DO. And so, growing up, just because I was a female, no one told me that, oh, you can't become a doctor because you're, you're a girl, you know? And so, it's just hard because now that I identify myself as a DO, it's hard, it's hard to hear people say, you can't do this because you're a DO. In my heart, or in, I know that I can't. Oh my gosh, it's, this is so difficult. It's so frustrating. It's very frustrating because as a DO, you can do anything and everything a D, an MD can. And so for people to sit here and tell me that I can't is very frustrating. And also with the match next year, a match is residency match, um, which means that after medical school, you have to go to residency which is a junior training before you can actually work on your own as a physician. It doesn't matter what specialty you go in, ophthalmology, surgery, PM&R, ortho, family medicine, internal medicine, you have to attend residency. And next year, there's a merger, which means that all MDs and all DOs are going to apply to the same residency, which means that further, we will have the exact same training. And so you see where my frustration comes. I, I just feel discriminated against. We don't discriminate against a whole group of people saying just because you're this race or just because you're this religion means that you're a bad person or you do bad things or you're not as equally good as some other race. And I feel like DOs are discriminated against as a whole profession compared to MDs, at least in the mind it's not everyone who discriminates, but there's, there are those, I'm sorry to say this, there are those ignorant people who do spill on their negative and uneducated thoughts on others, or just very old school. Like, no one tells you just because you're a female, you're not going to be as a good of a surgeon as a guy, just because you don't have a penis. Like, it just doesn't make sense, you know? So... Okay, rant, rant over. I'm done. Like you guys know how pa how passionate I am about this and how much I believe in um, in what I do and how much I care for people and how much we're helping people. And I'm still a physician. And so, let's move on to the differences. I know I have a lot of international subscribers, so you guys are probably wondering what is the difference. And I know certain countries like Canada, Spain. Um, Italy, things, specific countries don't recognize osteopaths or osteopaths are not physicians because they don't go to medical school. I know in Russia, they actually become MDs and then have to go to, a, like, to specialize in osteopathic medicine. So they are considered doctors. But in the US, we go through medical school. So we are physicians. We just have a different philosophy. So let's get into a little bit about osteopathic philosophy and how it differs from allopathic. Um, so as an osteopathic physician, we believe that um, it's a type of care where you treat disease and dysfunction um, in the context of the body being a whole unit. So there are four tenets to osteopathic medicine. And number one is that the body is a unit, mind, body, and spirit. Number two is that the body is capable of self-maintenance, self-healing, and self-regulation. Number three is structure and function are reciprocally intercorrelated. And number four is that any rational treatment should be based on the principle of this body unit, self-regulation, and structure and function. So another difference that we have in specifically in our training is um, OMM. What OMM stands for is Osteopathic Manipulative Medicine. And it's added to our cur curriculum first and second year. Each week, I believe it's, I forgot how many hours of lecture, it's been so long, but 
it's at least one hour of lecture and then four hours of lab each week. So week lab is when you do hands-on um, training. And how I try to, it's, oh my gosh, OMM could be its own video, but um, basically it's what we use to treat and diagnose musculoskeletal dysfunctions. And as an MD, you go, you have anatomy lab. And as a DO, we also have anatomy lab, but we also practice the skill of palpation. We learn how to see the human anatomy with our hands. And that's what makes us, our training different than an MD. So a lot of people ask, so is OMM like cracking someone like a chiropractor? Um, yes and no, like yes we learn, on how to crack people and we call that HVLA, high velocity, low amplitude. Um, but we also learn many other techniques, um, more mild, I want to say mild indirect techniques where we work with things like the fascia. And if you guys take anatomy, you guys know that the fascia encompasses everything, your, your muscles, the individual muscle fibers and um, breaks them up into compartments. So we learn to do things like that to relieve people's pain. A lot of people say like, oh, it's so minor, like how does this even work? How do you, how can you make someone better with just this little adjustment? And I would give people the example that pretend you have a pebble in your shoe, like a tiny pebble in your shoe. It's tiny, but you know it's there and it bothers you. And the more you walk on it, the more it affects your gait and um, slowly it affects your whole balance. And as an osteopathic physician, if I can get rid of that pebble for you, that would relieve so much of your stress and help your body realign and readjust and come back to where it wants to be in its neutral position. And so I went into osteopathic medicine because I fell in love with OMM or OMT, osteopathic manipulative treatment. I actually, as I said, I shadowed a physician for close to almost three years before applying to medical school because I knew that OMT is something I wanted to practice in my future. Um, and I can do a longer video on that if that's something you guys are interested in. Um, it's hard because it's more of a hands-on thing and, and it's hard to show on camera. I'm sorry if this is such a long video. Um, I hope you guys learned something about MDs and DOs. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And thank you so much on um, all the love in my last video. I enjoyed getting to know all of you and reading through all your comments. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe and join my family and I'll see you guys next time.